A gross point teenager with everything in front of him until the choice to vape nearly took it all away. Some people are just like, they just don't think it'll happen to them. Like they think they're invincible, which I think I had feelings like that too. And you would tell them now what? Like, look at me. Tonight, this young man wants you to take a look at him and listen, really listen. Last fall, word came that doctors at Henry Ford had performed a double lung transplant, the first in the U.S., made necessary because of vaping. But we knew almost nothing about the young patient then. Tonight, a Local 4 exclusive, for the first time, you're going to meet the teenager who very nearly lost his life to a vape pen. He and his mother sat down in their Gross Point home with our Devin Skillian. thought, well, if all my friends are still doing it and they're not getting any issues and they're doing it way more than me, then I'd be fine, but... But he wasn't fine. No, he didn't know it, but he was a long, long way from fine. And there came the day in September when he had a headache and a fever that spiked at 104. I remember going into the ER and then being there for about an hour, and then I don't remember anything, and then I, I never left the hospital after that. Daniel Ament is, or was, an athlete, in terrific shape, a runner who dreamed of one day becoming a Navy SEAL. Safe to say he had kept his lungs in very fine working order, but he was doing something that would nearly erase them from his chest. He had been vaping, like just about everyone else he knew. How commonplace was it at, uh, among not just your friends, among, but like, everybody people. at high oh, school? It's like basically everyone. Like It's more rare to find someone who doesn't. I would say. And going on even in school because it's mm -hmm. so easy to hide, right? Yeah, it's like not... people do it in classes and bathrooms mostly. Do you remember then the, the moment when it started to be, the, you started to develop some kind of problem and the things were right? The first time I thought I had a problem was the day I had the fever. That was the only symptoms I've ever had from it. So when it started, it was zero to 60 right yeah. out of the gate. Yeah. I did not feel like it was doing anything bad until that second day of school when I went to the ER. And then after that, I don't remember anything and then had to get new lungs. What a strange thing to say. I had to get new lungs. But where Daniel has so many days that he cannot remember, his mother has just as many days that she'll never be able to forget. It was hard because they kept asking me, do you think he would want to live? And I'm like, you know, because they needed to know that. Finally, it was just like, he's a 16-year-old kid. Of course he wants to live. There was plenty of confusion about what was wrong. At one point, an ER doctor suggested Daniel just go home. Tammy knew they had no business going home. But she also knew that she occasionally needed to leave the room so that nurses could get to the truth. Daniel told them what he hadn't wanted to tell his mom about vaping, especially since she had warned him against it time and time again. I had asked him if he was vaping and he said no again. Two hospitals later, Daniel was now at Henry Ford and getting worse to the point where he needed to be hooked up to a lung machine. His doctor said he had never seen a worse lung x-ray. It was as if Daniel's lungs had vanished. And the doctor said Daniel was facing certain death. Unable to generate any lung power, they arrived at the extreme. While a double lung transplant isn't as rare as it once was, it is still hardly commonplace. And finding a suitable pair of lungs can be a moonshot. But a set of lungs became available. Bad news for a family somewhere else was good news for the Ament family. And a kind of unfortunate history was made. Daniel became the first patient to receive a double lung transplant due to vaping. But he ended up being just in the hospital for 40 days. The transplant happened on the 40th day. Six hours of high wire surgery had saved his life. But it is hardly an outpatient procedure. Daniel had to learn to breathe again. How do you learn to breathe? It's such I don't a, know. It's it so just, second nature. Nobody yeah. thinks about breathing. How do you learn to do it? It was just like, I honestly don't know. I just remember I couldn't like, I couldn't time it. Like it was really hard to time and it just felt like I was losing all my air. And I'm assuming uh, there's got to be a pretty crazy scar. Yeah, that, so all the it evidence. Goes, so the scar goes from here and it goes like up like this. And then once they did cut like that, then they cut like this on my sternum, like they cut my sternum in half. And then they 
pulled my ribs open and then did the lungs. There is no more hiding from it. Daniel is now saying yes. Yes, he vaped. Yes, he vaped THC. And yes, it very nearly killed him. He is saying yes in the hopes that he can be the one to convince others to say no. A lot of my friends actually have, so that's what makes it hopeful for the future for me to actually, that I can save people from it. But Daniel is already coming to understand that a number of his friends can't just quit, even after watching what happened to him. And tonight at 11, we'll see that that list includes David Ament, Daniel's twin brother, who's finding that vaping is a tough habit to break. Devin Skillian, Local 4. Can you believe that? That's unbelievable. How can you not after seeing what it can do? And just but it shows how addictive it is. And I just give him oh. credit for taking the, having the courage to share that story and, and to admit what he was doing. It shows it was hard to admit he had to tell the nurse first. Yeah, his story is going to help a lot of people. There are a lot of people that have lots yeah. of questions about vaping. And so we have put together a helpful resource guide on our website, clickondetroit.com. Just go to the health page, including the risks for our kids. and. It also has a tip sheet on how to talk to them about e-cigarettes, which I'm sure many parents will do now.